In today's A-level IB video, we're going to be talking about the process of chromatography. Now, although this is a biology video, hopefully you met chromatography if you studied GCSE or IGCSE chemistry. Remember that it was a separation technique and that it was used to separate food colorings as well as dyes. And because it can be used in this way, we can also use it to separate photosynthetic pigments and, and that's actually what we're going to be looking at in today's video how we use chromatography to separate photosynthetic pigments and we'll be talking about the methodology involved so the method because we're looking at photosynthesis obviously we need a plant so first of all you want to tear up a sample of plant materials such as the leaf how do we get the pigments out of the leaf? Well, we need to grind up that leaf in a pestle and mortar. And because you need an abrasive surface, it's actually quite useful to add some sand. And we need a solvent. And the solvent I'm going to use is going to be alcohol, so ethanol. And grinding, if I draw the leaves in green, so you're going to be grinding up those leaf fragments with the sand and the ethanol and that's going to enable us to extract the leaf pigments. So grind the leaf, sand and ethanol inside a pestle and mortar. If anyone's interested, the bowl is the mortar and the grinding surface is the pestle and you often see that this is used in cookery if you're trying to make a spice paste for example. Anyway, I digress. Back to photosynthesis and chromatography. So we've obtained our photosynthetic pigments and we need to now place those on a watch glass. And then you want to direct a hot stream of hot air at those pigments in order to dry them. And because I can't draw, I'm not gonna draw the hairdryer, but that's the simplest way in which you would do this. So use a hairdryer to evaporate excess water and then just add a few more drops of your solvent so that was ethanol finally we want to actually carry out the chromatography so hopefully you did this at school yourselves the simplest way of how you would carry out the chromatography so you have your beaker here's a piece of filter paper and then remember you have to draw a line which shows the starting point and that's drawn in pencil and the reason we use pencil is because it's insoluble so it won't disturb our chromatography. Next up, add your photosynthetic pigments. You're almost ready to go now, you just need to add some running solvent into the bottom of the beaker, making sure that it's just below that photosynthetic pigment spot but so that it touches the filter paper. And then at this point, because that running solvent will show a tendency of soaking up the paper, it will draw with it the photosynthetic pigment, and then we'll actually get our chromatogram. So let's look at some potential results. So let's look at our results. So here's our filter paper again. Here's the pencil line. Here was the starting point. Now notice if there was a dot which remained on the starting point, it would mean that that particular pigment was insoluble. However, in this set of results, we can see that the pigments have all run, which means that they're all soluble. So what could they potentially be? And this is just an example. Don't learn them off by heart. I just want you to understand how chromatography actually works. So the least soluble pigment was xanthophylls, and that's because it's traveled the shortest distance, followed by chlorophyll B, then chlorophyll A, and then lastly carotene. You'll also notice that there'll be a final line near the top and that's the solvent front. So that's how far our solvent, our running solvent has traveled. So just to make a few points, carotene is the most soluble because it's traveled the furthest. The xanthophylls are the least soluble. And you can make this more accurate by doing an RF calculation. So your RF calculation states that the distance moved by the pigment in question, so effectively the spot of dye or ink, or in this case photosynthetic pigment, is divided by the distance moved by the solvent. And so you can actually measure that off your filter paper, off of your chromatogram. So to work out the distance moved by the solvent, use your ruler to measure this distance here. 
and then to work out the individual RF values, so the RF value for xanthophyll, for example, you measure this distance here. And so once you have that value, you divide it by the distance moved by the solvent, and that is your RF value.